Do you remember learning how to drive? I think there are some lessons we can take from that experience that can help us improve our health habits day to day. Before I tell you what those are, won't you please like this video and subscribe to this channel? When I was learning to drive, I remember how hard it was to keep the car going straight. I'd be holding the wheel and I thought it was straight and it'd be sort of drifting off to the right towards the curb. And then I would correct and I would overcorrect and I would sort of spin towards oncoming traffic and then I'd overcorrect from that because that was even scarier. And I was kind of lurching back and forth for a long time. And now I think about steering and of course it's second nature really easy. Similarly, when I started learning how to brake, I would hit the brakes really hard and the car would kind of buck. And then when I was started going again, I'd put my foot too heavily on the gas and it would go too fast and I'd have to hit the brakes. And again, it was this constant overcompensation, overcorrection. But again, after paying attention and learning how to the weight of my foot was going to determine the precise, um, you know, pounds per square inch that was going to go on that whatever pedal it was to help me brake appropriately or accelerate appropriately or keep the car in the middle or turn it to go right or left just the right amount. Now I don't have to think about it at all. All I have to do is keep awake and keep my eyes open and it happens automatically. Now with our health habits, we can often do the same thing. We can say, OK, well, oh, God, I put on 20 pounds. I'm going to go on a huge diet. I'm not going to eat anything or I'm going to intermittent fast. I'm going to um, do a, um, a thousand calorie VLC diet, very low calorie diet. I'm going to spend three hours at the gym and we can, you know, do something like that until we either become so famished that we eat the first thing we see if it's, you know, whatever a drive through or we burn ourselves out with exercise or we start hallucinating or becoming irritable because we're not giving ourselves enough calories or nutrients and then we can swing back and forth. And unfortunately, we don't often learn our way out of this because we don't have the same facility for paying attention. For paying attention to the, the inputs, to the feedback from the environment, internal and external in the moment, because if I'm eating and I'm full and I'm on my phone and I'm listening to the radio and having a conversation with someone, I'm going to keep eating because I'm not really paying attention to the feedback. But when I'm sitting with the food, as soon as I sort of say, oh, this this last bite wasn't as enjoyable as the bite before it, like I'm now in a deficit. The diminishing returns have become negative. I could stop eating right away and it doesn't feel like a struggle. Even if I'm eating something bad, like a candy bar, you know, and I'm like, oh, I have, have four of these, eat them up. Oh, because right. If I'm doing it mindlessly, I will do that. When I bring all of my attention to the candy bar and start eating it, it really quickly, I am satiated. Like I don't have that kind of triggered problem when I'm in my body, in my mind, in the here and now. So there's pretty much no health behavior that we can't get a handle on, at least to some extent, by insisting on presence. So if I'm going to go for a run today, being present for my body, what does it feel like? What does it want to do? I can test it. Yeah, I'm tired now and I know when I get moving in five minutes, I'll feel great. So maybe I push through a little bit, but I still pay attention today. Is today going to be a hard workout or a recovery workout? What do I need? What does my body need? What does my mind need? What does my soul need? Bringing presence solves a lot of technical problems that, frankly, we don't have the brain power to solve. We can't, when driving, do calculus to figure out how far to turn the wheel or how much pressure to put on the accelerator or the brake. We don't have that kind of computing power. Right? Google is putting billions of dollars into self-driving cars and they're nowhere near as good as a human yet in terms of making those algorithmic decisions. And humans don't do it through math. We don't do it through physics. We don't do it through intellect. We do it through felt sense of ourselves in an environment. 
And just like if we're trying to figure out how many calories should I have, how many steps should I move today, how many reps, how many sets, and if all that lives on spreadsheets and we're doing it because we're trying to get every single variable accounted for, we will drive ourselves crazy and we'll never get it right. Whereas if we are paying attention to the externals and the internals, just to the way you drive a car, we will get it right a lot of the time. And when we don't, we'll get feedback that will make us smarter. All right. Have a great day.